What if Michael Myers became the Ghost Rider? So what's up gang, it's your boy Friday Random Media. I'm back with another YouTube video. And this is gonna be another what if style video. Um, you know, I've dropped one of these before. However, I'm back with another one. And this is going to be, as I said before, what if Michael Myers became the Ghost Rider? The shape of Haddonfield meets the spirit of vengeance. What could possibly go wrong? In a way, these horror slash supernatural themed characters are exact opposites. First, I'm going to be getting into the origins of these characters. Now, first we have Michael Myers, the origins of Michael Myers. Out the gate, Michael Myers was an absolute menace. At only age six, he murdered his older sister, and for the next 15 years, he was kept in an asylum before escaping and, of course, catching multiple bodies along the way. So ever since escaping, Michael's goals have been debated upon due to several different timelines between movies and comics. However, it's most known that Myers stalks the residents of Haddonfield, um, you know, hunting his younger sister, Laurie Strode. Michael Myers has continuously been said to be the embodiment of evil, hatred, and is a force of evil that will never rest, no matter how long it may take to catch every body on his list. Of course, some of the info from the movies and the comics, um, it gets convoluted, so I'm just going to lump them together so we can kind of get a more full idea of the character and where he stands. Now, on to Ghost Rider, and there are several different Ghost Riders. So, there's been many Ghost Riders throughout the years, and most popular probably being the following of Johnny Blaze, Robbie Reyes, Danny Ketch, and Alejandra. So every Ghost Rider has their own slightly unique abilities and stories, you know, but we'll focus on the most commonly shared traits. Uh, the narrative of the Spirit of Vengeance has been one that writers can't seem to really make their mind up about. Um, the entity that powers or is subliminally controlling the Ghost Rider is named Zarathos. Zarathos and his story is a very mixed bag. Sometimes he's a rival of demons, a rival of devils, while he himself is also a demon. Well, it's also said that the spirits of vengeance are rogue angels from heaven. So, whatever you want to decide, whatever you want to run with, the spirit of vengeance is brought to earth to claim the souls of evil impurities, murderers, other horrible criminals, to demons, and other mystical creatures. Um, so that kind of covers the origin of the spirit of vengeance. Now, in this next section of the video, we're going to break down the powers, strengths, abilities of these two characters, and I'm going to split it up into five categories each in kind of a power scaling fashion. There's going to be strength, attack power and durability, combat speed, battle IQ, and the final category, powers, hacks, abilities, and gear. All right, so now onto our scaling section of the video. We're going to start with Michael Myers. Our first category will be the strength category. What is the raw strength of Myers? Aside from consistently lifting, tossing, and killing numerous victims with one hand, Myers has shown feats of supernatural strength time and time again. Um, he's lifted and carried a 1,000 pound tombstone for miles, planting it in someone's house as a prank. So not only is Michael Myers strong, this man's got jokes. So, another case of his strength is the time that Myers flipped a car onto its side. He was practically able to deadlift and flip this car, and on top of that, it was a damaged Michael Myers. This was a battle-torn Michael Myers. So, I'm about to give y'all a little hot take, my own headcanon, my own opinion here, that if Michael Myers was allowed to continue, continue getting stronger, he was able to continue taking bodies at Hattonfield, I feel like this man could be pushed to lift up to 10,000 pounds. Like I said, that's a hot take. On to our second category, attack power and durability. How powerful is Michael Myers' attacks and how durable is the shape? Michael Myers has been seen one-shotting his victim for years. With one shot, he's bodied victims with blades, random objects, and of course, even with the bare hands. This man's got hands. As far as, My as far as Michael Myers' durability and his toughness, Michael is comically known for getting his ass kicked only to return and absolutely mob on people. He's been beat up, he's been stabbed, he's been cut, he's been shot with pistols and shotguns, 
He's fallen from great heights, but he has never been killed. Man's never been put on a stretcher. At least permanently. Now, our third category, combat speed. Our boy Mike Myers has deceptive speed in and outside of combat. Myers effortlessly intercepts attackers, quickly making them into victims. On top of that, Myers can body several victims at one time so fast they don't even have the chance to react. When Michael Myers has his blade, he's able to make impossibly surgical cuts in a matter of seconds. As far as Michael's ability to evade and fool his victims, Michael Myers almost seems to teleport with the way he can vanish instantly from the scene. It's kind of ridiculous. Now, this teleportation theory isn't exactly proven. However, if he wasn't teleporting, his speed would be off the chart to escape from people's line of sight. Uh, moving on to our fourth category, battle IQ, battle intelligence. Michael Myers' ability to intelligently navigate the field. And it may shock people how intelligent and how clever Myers actually is. Michael Myers often plays with his victims by leaving bodies in a specific way, a specific arrangement, and then stalking his victims, sometimes in or out of view. He constantly, effortlessly outstealths and outsmarts his, uh, his victims, often leading them directly to him. As I stated before, Michael Myers' ability to body his victims with surgical precision in the heat of conflict is seemingly supernatural. He should not have that ability. Also, weirdly enough, side note, Michael Myers supposedly knows how to drive. So it's possible that, you know, the curse of Thorn or whatever it is that powers him uh, just grants him whatever knowledge he needs to get the job done. On to our fifth and final category, powers, hacks, abilities, and gear. Michael Myers has a cluster of powers and abilities supposedly stemming from the Curse of Thorn, tied to the curse on Haddonfield. The supernatural element allows Myers to rapidly heal his insane durability and his supposed resurrections. This also grants all the previous abilities and physical prowess of Myers that I mentioned. It is stated that Michael Myers' ability in existence is beyond comprehension. His existence is the embodiment in physical manifestation of hatred and evil. Myers also rocks with some of, some sort of narrative precognition or battle precognition, which allows him to pinpoint his victim's exact next move, and this even extends to the entirety of Haddonfield and what they will do as a response to what he's doing. As far as Michael Myers' gear and weapons, there's not much to note. Uh, we all know Myers' weapon of choice is the blade, the kitchen knife, however, he can make use out of any nearby object, really, and uh, if you can catch a body with it, Michael Myers will use it. So, there we have our scaling breakdown for the Masked Menace, Michael Myers. Now, let's get into the spirit of vengeance, the Ghost Rider. Alright, now moving on to Ghost Rider scaling, we're going to get into category number one, which is strength. Starting with the general strength of the Ghost Riders, the Ghost Rider has access to theoretically as much power as he needs to complete his task. However, the Ghost Rider's strength can vary depending on the situation. Ghost Rider can easily flip and throw vehicles, as well as trade hands with the strongest of characters, you know, most notably Hulk, surfer tier characters. Although, like I said, it can be very inconsistent depending on the situation. Now, category number two, attack power and durability. Ghost Rider is more known for being a tank rather than a strength-based fighter. Man-made weapons have absolutely zero effect on Ghost Rider walking through gunfire, explosives, and most blunt force during a battle. Unless this is an astronomically strong character he's fighting or some sort of magic or heaven-based weapon, there's zero pain the Ghost Rider will feel. Now, as far as Ghost Rider's attack power, Ghost Rider is no slouch. His Hellfire Chain can effortlessly slice through vehicles and buildings, as well as the Ghost Rider's Hellfire can melt tanks, it can blast mountains, and it can one-shot many lower mid-tier opponents. And uh, his Hellfire abilities, such as the famous Penance Stare, can actually one-shot even some of the higher-tier opposition in some instances. So getting on to category number three, Combat Speed. Hand-to-hand -hand in the pocket, Ghost Rider can hang with 
any high street tier level easily. You know, Spider-Man, Black Panther, Wolverine, this would be no contest for him. Um, even guys like Hulk, you know, on that level, Ghost Rider can get to that power level. He can get to that combat speed. On the Ghost Rider's ride itself, most notably Ghost Rider's Hellfire motorcycle, the Spirit of Vengeance can outrun Mjolnir. He can outrun Thor's magic hammer. That is nutty speed. Getting on to category number four, Ghost Rider's battle IQ. Now, Ghost Rider doesn't really have battle IQ per se, martial arts combat skill, but more so in the way Ghost Rider uses their powers and abilities in the field. Ghost Rider is able to trade blows with almost anyone who steps up, but the Rider will also deploy a ring of hellfire to close off the battlefield and make it a more close-knit fight. And now, referencing back to the penance stare, Ghost Rider can use this ability to look into the minds and the memories of his opponents. And this is going to lead us to our final category, category number five, powers, hacks, abilities, and gear. So just like Mr. Michael Myers, the Ghost Rider has an assortment of powers that we will also list, up, list off. I've been talking about Hellfire a lot because Hellfire is one of Ghost Rider's main powers. Uh, Hellfire can burn and scar the souls of the guilty along with you know putting people in kind of mental traps and whatnot, physical traps. The Ghost Rider's Hellfire ability also grants Ghost Rider to possess any vehicle most notably the motorcycle, however, we've seen this happen with other machinery, and even animals. Ghost Rider BC, riding the, mo the woolly mammoth. Badass shit, man. Badass shit. Not to mention the vehicle of the rider's choosing can reach speeds faster than Thor's hammer. Like I said earlier, absolutely nutty. As far as weapons go, the Ghost Rider mostly uses the Hellfire attacks either through mystical chain or, you know, eyes, mouth hands as a form of a hellfire blast but the most known the famous ghost rider staple of course the pen and stare although the pen and stare can be inconsistent at times the pen and stare renders enemies paralyzed basically as they experience the physical pain and emotional turmoil of slain innocents something about these powers and abilities also you know Ghost Rider's taken on World War Hulk, Doctor Strange, and even another Ghost Rider when Johnny Blaze and Danny Ketch were fighting, which were all badass panels, by the way. I highly recommend going and checking those fights out. But that's going to do it for Ghost Rider scaling. Now that we have a good look and idea at the power of both of these characters, let's get into the third and final part of this video. Now this final part of the video, this is going to be the big question. The ultimate question I'm asking, what if Michael Myers became the Ghost Rider? And the first thing to note here is that the evil that is Michael Myers or the Curse of Thorn is only that. It's a curse. Something in which the Ghost Rider has been able to dispatch many times with his foes, many times in his stories. So in my opinion, it would make sense that the Curse of Thorn, the evil of Michael Myers, would be cast from his body and overtaken by the spirit of vengeance. Ultimately, the evil would be diluted by the spirit of vengeance and it wouldn't exist anymore. This would be an interesting take on the character because as an audience, we're not 100% sure what Michael's actual lore is. We don't know anything about his personality aside from the evil part of him. Would this empty husk of Michael Myers be the perfect vehicle of vengeance? Since the Ghost Rider could always remain in control with no seeming consequences, that would be an interesting take. However, let's say this wasn't the case. What if Michael Myers in The Curse of Thorn was actually enhanced by the spirit of vengeance? What if, rather than extinguishing the power of Michael Myers, it enhanced his powers to a level no one could imagine? Well... Well, to say the least, it would take the most powerful characters in comics to stop this perfect killing machine. Michael Myers' Ghost Rider would be on a conquest to scourge the earth of not the guilty, but the innocent. Ghost Rider Michael Myers would be capable of claiming the lives of entire cities in a swirl of hell hellfire. That is, if he doesn't want to butcher them with his hellfire blade, 
or even worse, a pseudo penance stare unleashing all sorts of traumatic torture upon someone's psyche. Vengeance Myers would easily claim not only Haddonfield, but turned the entire planet into a desolate hellscape of bodies until moving on to the next realm of choice. That is, until, or unless, this was a world of other superpowered beings. So now I gotta ask, what heroes could possibly defeat Vengeance Myers? If I had to name a few, here's a small lineup. So I'm gonna begin with some Marvel-based characters. I would go with Hulk. Uh, kind of an unoriginal pick, but specifically World War Hulk, who already managed to KO Ghost Rider um, when it was Johnny Blaze in control. Now, of course, this wasn't a fi- like a finale to the fight. You know, they didn't continue past this point when they could have, but Hulk was able to ultimately knock out the Ghost Rider. My second pick would be Doctor Strange. In a one v one, Doctor Strange would be a formidable opponent. Um, He's gone up against demons and all sorts of mystical creatures. However, I don't think he could do it by himself. I think Doctor Strange would be very effective with the team behind him. Um, I would go with Thor. Thor is just as strong as Hulk, if not stronger. Ah, that's kind of a hot take. But also Thor has magic-based weapons forged by gods and whatnot. So these are the kind of weapons that would hurt Ghost Rider, theoretically. Uh, also, I would pick Jean Grey and the Phoenix Force. Uh, you know, the Phoenix Force has incredibly broken powers and hacks. Uh, maybe I'll go into that in another video, but I definitely feel like the Phoenix Force Jean Grey would be more than a formidable opponent for the Ghost Rider. Or, should I say, Vengeance Myers. Now, getting on to some D- DC characters. First, I'm going to say John Constantine. His magical ability is on par with the likes of Doctor Strange. And John Constantine's luck is unlike anyone else's. He's got mad luck hacks. Um, Second, I'll go Wonder Woman. Although Ghost Rider's Hellfire could do damage, uh, Wonder Woman easily outclasses Ghost Rider physically. And she's also wielding weapons forged by gods. Like I said earlier, this could damage Ghost Rider and probably would. Uh, Finally, I'm going to go with Raven. She's an insanely underrated, insanely powerful pick here. Um, She's even been showed to shield against Hellfire. Um, She can also cast emotional manipulation spells or some sort, uh, which, in my opinion, could take the Myers out of Ghost Rider. Could take Myers out of Ghost Rider form. Uh, But who knows? It's going to take a lot from any of these characters to beat the to beat Vengeance Myers. And uh, now keeping all these characters in mind here, they can always fight Ghost Rider Michael Myers, but the real problem is once a bloodthirsty, corrupted Zarathos emerges, I don't know who would be able to stop him. An unhinged, corrupt, warpath, Curse of Thorn Zarathos, in my opinion, may very well render the Earth a true hellscape. Alright, so there we have it, folks. What if Michael Myers became the Ghost Rider? Or what if the Curse of Thorn intertwined with the Spirit of Vengeance? Thank you guys for tuning in. Comment down below what other characters you like to see mashed up. I like to do different universes, so, you know, Marvel in DC or other comic universes or horror mixed with comics such as this one um really any any fiction whatsoever comment down below also comment what other video requests you guys would like to see um season two of my versus battle series will be coming in the new year 2023 and uh hopefully there's lots to do this next year lots of different videos hopefully i can come up with a bunch of different series And uh, just more enjoyable content for you guys. As always, thank you for tuning in. Find me on TikTok by the same name, Friday Random Media. And have an awesome day.